I'm Bill DeRozier, and it's my pleasure to welcome Pat Henderson and Jude Clemente to our next installment of the Think About Energy webinar series. Earlier this year, George Stark kicked off our first live briefing, and we had addressed earlier this year that we were going to add additional content, both recorded and live, to continue bringing the relevant information, the up-to-date information about what's going on in the energy world and why it matters to our everyday lives. So it's my pleasure to continue that conversation with our first recorded interview with Pat Henderson and Jude Clemente. Pat Henderson is the Director of Regulatory Affairs for the Marcella Shell Coalition, and Jude Clemente is the Principal at JTC Energy Research Associates, and he continually writes on Forbes and is very active on Twitter. Gentlemen, thank you for joining me today. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Well, it's no surprise the topic of the day, the topic of the week has most recently been energy, electricity, Texas, some of these themes that have uh, kind of been all over the news. And what went wrong in Texas? Here, a state that's uh, known as the energy capital of the world, producing both massive amounts of hydrocarbons, massive amounts of, of, of wind energy. And it was basically brought to its knees, or even worse, when its electrical grid infrastructure failed, failed to deliver, leaving millions of people without power, electricity, heat during a difficult time. Jude, you've been very active covering this topic. I'm really curious to see what your thoughts are, especially now we are a couple days, a couple weeks past the, the incident, if you will, if there's any more clarity on the situation and what's going on. Yeah, sure, thanks for having me. Um, yeah, I mean, to me, this was a historic, obviously cold weather. It was the coldest weather that Texas has seen since 1909, from what I'm seeing. So the system itself wasn't necessarily totally prepared for such an event. And you, in winter, it's very unique in Texas because you have not just direct heating for natural gas, but you also have electrical heating. So the number, way, the number one way that Americans heat their homes is with natural gas. Well, the number, way to, the number two way we heat our homes is with electricity, which comes from natural gas. That's our main source of electricity. So it was really a double whammy uh, that happened you know, in, in Texas and even the surrounding states. And Texas, of course, is the ERCOT uh, power grid system. It's a little bit of an electrical island. So it was hard to get um, you know, electricity coming in from other states because it's not connected to other states or it would be under FERC jurisdiction. That's why the Texans don't want that. So basically what happened there, it was freezing cold weather. You know, I think Houston got down to 10 degrees and it really was a, 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 a failure across systems. I mean, there's no question about it. Pipelines had issues uh, moving gas, power plants had trouble getting gas, but even coal froze. Normally in coal in winter, that's when you use coal because you can store it on site. Well, there was coal piles that froze. Nuclear had some issues. Wind absolutely had some issues um, not being able to deliver. And one thing to remember about wind power in, in, in uh, Texas in the wintertime, it's not expected to deliver, which is something that all the people defending wind power conveniently forget that it's not expected. To, so, of course, that's a problem when you have a ton of wind capacity that is not expected to be available. So when there is an issue, wind uh, can't fill in. Uh, so it really was a, a complicated issue. It was certainly a failure um, in many ways. And Texas, of course, is a deregulated market. So there's really not a ton of incentive for um, you know power generation facilities and utilities to have weatherized equipment like we have here in PJM in the Northeast. Uh, the reason they don't have that is because it's expensive. And again, this was a, a, a black swan event, in my opinion. It was a totally black swan event that happens once a hundred years, um, and we saw it, you know, last week. Well, and that's a great point. I think we're seeing that a lot on on social media: the finger pointing, the uh, who's right, who's wrong. Is it green energy? Is it the hydrocarbon side of of the space? I know one thing's for certain that when the wind energy, which Texas does have a lot of, uh, it's what the number one in the, in the country, it's probably one of the largest producers of wind energy in the world. And when that did disappear, there was a void that had to be left. As you're talking, there are obvious connections to uh, things that weren't winterized, whether or not that capacity was able to be dispatched or not. But there seemed to be one clear trend 
and as it relates to natural gas, natural gas didn't disappear. In fact, in a lot of cases, it, it increased its capacity uh, to help make up some of that load difference. Uh, in the end, it wasn't enough in certain cases as the grid operators had to make tough choices. Can you elaborate a little bit on that? Yeah, well, that, that's what you're hearing. And, and, and it, what makes me kind of sad on this situation, not just the calamity of it, but you're already starting to see some of the politics creep into it. And this is happening from, from experts at Rice University, which is obviously in Houston and uh, UT and Austin, is there's already been this really, um, you know, defense of wind power, that this wasn't wind's fault. No, it wasn't wind. You're exactly right, Bill, that gas ramped up in a lot of, in a lot of cases. But my thing that is totally going unmentioned is that ERCOT goes into winter with 25,000 megawatts, 25,000 megawatts of wind power of, of, of available. That's what they have. They go into winter only expecting 6,000 of those, of those megawatts to be online. And we have experts at University of Texas and University of Rice, which Rice University, best in the country, that are telling us that that's not a problem. That's the problem that you go into winter that you're not wind isn't expected to be available. And we're being told that that's not a problem. Again, that is probably the problem <laughs> that it's not it's, it's your second car that isn't available. Well, we need a second car that can run when there is some issues with the, with the first car. 